in these images, um, altering the time gain compensation sliders shows you the differing effects of different slider settings um, on the quality of the picture, um, where you're trying to achieve um, a uniform quality picture in the area of interest. Resolution is heavily related to frequency. The quality of the picture is related to the frequency of the ultrasound um, beam, um, with the general principle being that high frequency um, probes give excellent resolution but only a very poor depth penetration because of all the um, signal attenuation and low frequency um, settings produce poor resolution but an excellent depth penetration because there's less um, tissue loss uh, of the ultrasound energy as it goes through the deeper tissues. The depth setting you select when setting up your ultrasound machine should include the area of anatomical interest and should consider the effect of frequency. The general principle is to use the highest frequency you possibly can that will still reach the depth that you want to interrogate. Generally in medical ultrasound these are the sort of frequencies in megahertz that are used for different applications. Resolution refers to the power of the ultrasound machine to discriminate between different reflectors at different depths uh, and see these entities as separate tissues. The aim of high resolution pictures is that the real anatomy depicted on the left should be represented as that uh, in the screen on the right. With poor resolution the four distinct anatomical entities on the left will be resolved as one amorphous blob uh, when projected on the screen on the right. Axial resolution or vertical resolution refers to the ability of an ultrasound machine to differentiate between structures at different depths and is usually the most accurate part of an ultrasound machine's performance. Horizontal resolution where structures at the same depth are differentiated as different uh, is normally of poorer performance and relies on a different ultrasonic principle. At the highest frequencies used, axial resolution in the more superficial tissues can get down to about 0.5 um, millimetres. The important issue when resolving uh, axial resolution is the spatial pulse width where shorter spatial pulse widths produce the most um, impressive axial resolutions. Ultrasound waves um, are generated not as continuous bursts of energy but as cycles of energy, typically in very short bursts, around three cycles per burst. So there'll be three or four wavelengths sent out, there'll be a, a big delay before a similar packet is repeated, during the delay, that gives enough time for the sound to enter the tissues um, and be reflected back, which means that with each burst of energy, the ultrasound machine then listens to see what's coming back. If you have so many cycles at such and such a frequency, then that will actually occupy a physical space within the tissues, and that is referred to as the spatial pulse width, um, which is symbolized by the black double-headed arrow um, on the right-hand diagram. The spatial pulse width is critical in axial or vertical resolution and here we see a three burst ultrasound cycle with a fixed spatial pulse width approaching two different reflectors. As they approach the first reflector, some of the sound energy is, trans is reflected back while the rest of the energy continues on to the second reflector. This is likewise reflected back and what we have is two returning echoes separated by a gap, which means the ultrasound machine can resolve these as two different structures. If we put these two reflectors closer together, a different effect happens. Here we see a three-cycle burst approaching two reflectors, which are now much closer together. As they approach the first reflector, energy is reflected back off the first reflector. It then travels on to be reflected back
off the second reflector, but this time the reflection coming off the deeper reflector manages to catch up or coincide with the reflector coming off the top one, which means these two reflections are merged into one, seen as one reflection, and does not allow the ultrasound machine to differentiate between these two as different structures. In order to be seen as distinct, the reflectors must be more than half the spatial pulse width apart. Um, otherwise, the signals will combine to produce a single return rather than um, a double return. We can reduce spatial pulse width and therefore improve resolution with one of two methods. Either we can reduce the number of cycles in each burst, which will reduce the um, spatial pulse width as seen by the diagram on the left, or we can increase the frequency, um, which will shorten the the spatial pulse width. Practically it's very difficult to reduce the number of cycles below three because of the damping in the ultrasonic crystals so generally any increase in spatial re in axial resolution using a reduction in spatial pulse width is manipulated through increasing frequency. Horizontal resolution at the highest frequencies is in the order of one millimeter so it is less accurate than axial resolution and it depends on the beam width being um, emitted by the ultrasonic probe, where the narrower the beam width, the better is the, res is the horizontal resolution. If we look at these series of diagrams, we can see a relatively broad beam width scanning across two reflectors, and if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see the effect of, of this on the finished article in the, um, on the ultrasound screen. So as the beam moves across, there will be a point where it is interacting with the first reflector, then it's interacting with both reflectors, then the last reflector, and finally it's moved away. The end result of this is that these two reflectors horizontally are seen as a single entity, uh, which is what you see in the ultrasound screen at the bottom. So with that beam width, the machine has failed to discriminate between these two different structures. If we narrow the beam width, we can then have a period of time where the beam interacts with one reflector. There's a gap between the two with no reflections coming back. It interacts with the second reflector and then moves on. This is different because the end result now will be that the ultrasound machine can differentiate between these two different reflectors at the same vertical distance uh, from the probe. The narrower the beam width, the better is the horizontal resolution we can influence this by adjusting the focal point to coincide with the depth of the structures we're interrogating and many um, modern ultrasound machines have one or more focus points that can be adjusted um, as little arrows on the side of the depth scale and can markedly improve the image quality when manipulated to coincide with the depth of the nerve to be um, examined. Looking at this diagram, you can see that if the focal point of this beam were moved down to coincide with the depth of the structures of interest at 1, 2 and 3, we would get better axial resolution than as is currently shown, where they've got a wider part of the beam um, at their depth. So horizontal resu resolution is related to beam width, which is narrower with higher frequencies um, and narrowest uh, at the focal point um, of the ultrasonic beam.
So in summary, if we have four anatomical structures that are very superficial, it's likely the ultrasound machine will see all four entities uh, as being separate, as shown in this picture. If we now move the structures to a deeper depth and have to use a reduced frequency, the first thing that will change will be the horizontal resolution. So now what you see on the screen looks like uh, the structures are blurred horizontally. And if we go deeper still and have to further decrease the frequency, then all four structures will appear as a blob. Um, this is simply a reflection of ultrasonic performance at increasing depth of tissue. There are a number of horizontal artifacts relating to shadowing and enhancement that can be improved by multi-beam technology. Multi-beam technology means that the same ultrasonic probe will interrogate the tissues from slightly different angles, such as here. And here. And these different, slightly different images are added together to produce a compound image which are generally of much better quality uh, than the single beam technology. Um, if your machine has multi-beam technology, it should invariably be switched on.